Hi everyone, Bren here. It's so great to be back this week. And you know what? We are almost in the second month of autumn. I cannot believe that. And I really need to crack on and get this garden filled up with plants for the cooler months. So today I thought I'd make a start on it and fill out one of the raised garden beds I've got here just behind me. I'm going to direct sow some seeds. I'm also going to pop in some of those seedlings that I started a few months or a few weeks back. I'm getting carried away with the time. And yeah, I need to do a bit of a carrot harvest because I'm planning on making a carrot cake this weekend. Plus some other bits and pieces to take a look at. So just sit back for a few minutes and let's get into it now. I grabbed one of my seedling trays and some seeds that I can sow in autumn because I want to get this bed planted up today. I'm going to fill the bed up with some edible crops that are going to taste delicious. We'll be able to harvest them during winter. But not only that, it's going to add a beautiful pop of colour here in this patch during the cooler months. Look who's come over to say hi. The two girls. It's so nice to see them being so content. <laughs> Roaming around the garden looking for little tasty treats. I'm sure they'll find them today because it has been raining and usually when it rains the worms come a bit closer to the surface and other little creatures, little bugs. So they'll be happy today. I'm sure they'll have plenty to eat out here. Once I finish getting this bed all planted up, I'm definitely going to have to protect it from the two chucks because I know the temptation will be way too great for them to come in here and scratch it up and disturbing all those seeds and seedlings. So I'll probably put a bit of chicken wire down or even some little twigs that I find around the garden just to stop them from doing any damage in here. Do you see what I mean? I went away for like 30 seconds to grab something off the windowsill and Snowflake has already made a bit of a mess in this bed. Oh my goodness, I'll shoo her out in a minute. I just need to get my seeds sorted out and then it is time for her to vacate the premises. Right, so she's got out by herself. I didn't need to shoo her away. She'll probably get back in now after I said that, but that's all right, because I'm not planting yet. I'm gonna explain to you what I'm putting in here. I'm going to do a bit of a tiered system with the planting. So the tallest will be at the back and then it will just gradually go down lower in height. I feel like I have to mention this because I made this mistake when I was a beginner gardener and I wish someone had shared it with me so that I had saved myself a lot of time and frustration. When you are planting out a garden bed with different varying heights of plants, it's really important to know the direction of the sun because this will help your plants thrive. You need to make sure that the taller plants don't cast a shadow on any of the shorter plants meaning that they don't receive as much sunlight, they don't grow to their full potential, and even worse, they are quite weak and more susceptible to disease. At the back, I'm gonna put a row of these purple potted peas. Now I'll be direct sowing these, but you can also start them off in containers or punnets, or what I like to do, pop them in some toilet roll holders. And then after they've reached an inch or so in height, you can transplant them into the garden. But today I'm gonna to just direct sow these little seeds. Usually with my peas, whether it be those potted peas, you know, snow peas, even the ornamental sweet peas, I usually soak them in water overnight. This is something that my parents did and I believe my granddad did it as well. Um, I find it helps speed up the germination of the seeds. I think what happens, I mean, I don't really know the science or even if there is science behind it, but you know, if it's good enough for my parents and my granddad, it's good enough for me. I wanna keep up the tradition. What I was gonna say was, I think what happens is the water just helps to um, soften the outer layer of the pea and it speeds up germination pretty much. In front of them, I'm going to be planting some of these rainbow charred seedlings, also known as 
silver beet bright lights and they're given that name because they have really colorful stems that come in a range of colors so you've got yellow and reds and pinks and oranges they are just so beautiful so i'll pop a few of them in the ground rainbow chard or rainbow silver beet is a very easy plant to grow and the great thing about it is it's cut and come again so you can harvest the outer stems and the plant will continue to grow giving you multiple harvests over many months and the great thing about them is they can tolerate the cold as well as some heat too in front of them i'm going to put in some of these edible flowers called johnny jump ups you might remember I did actually sow some of these seeds in punnets a few weeks back and I got my seedlings, I divided them up, put them into separate cells and you never guess what happened. <laughs> I only now have one seedling which is a bit frustrating but I still have plenty of time left in the season to sow them so I'm thinking today I might just scatter a few seeds along here the, along the front and allow them to grow to seedlings. I might need to do a bit of thinning out but that's grand because I can pluck them out and then put them into punnets and use them elsewhere in the garden. Oh my goodness there's a shower. <laughs> This shower, I don't think it's going to last very long. I quickly need to go and grab a few carrots because later on today, or more than likely it'll be tonight, by the time I get around to it, I need to make a carrot cake. So I thought I'd add some fresh ones from my patch to pop into it and hopefully it will improve the flavour a bit more. This is so satisfying pulling them out, give them a little wiggle. Oh. Here's a few more I pulled out and actually that's probably enough, but I did spot a rather large one that I want to pull out with you guys just to see how big it is. It's just in here. Do you see it? Look at the size of it. Oh my goodness. And how you can check if carrots are ready is you just pull the soil away from the top bit and you get an idea of how big the carrot is. But this one looks enormous. Okay. Let's hope it comes out in one piece. Oh, I'll give it a little wiggle first to try and loosen it. Oh, this one is really big. I can tell already. Wow. <laughs> wow, look at that. Like compared to the other ones I pulled out, it's a whopper. I was hoping this week that I would be able to record my carrot cake recipe, but I just don't have the time. But what I will do in next Friday's vlog is I'll pop up a picture of how the cake turned out. I'm standing in the patch where I have a bunch of dahlias, which I've grown from saved seeds. Some of them are pretty ordinary, but then you get the occasional gem like this one. It's absolutely beautiful. And again, Sometimes it's a bit tricky for the colours to show up on camera, but this is like a reddish pink flower and it has this lovely purple hue on the tops or the tips of the petals. Definitely one I think I'm going to save the tuber and grow again next year. Here's a good example of what I mean by, you know, just a bit ordinary. So this is another dahlia that I've grown from saved seeds. And I don't think it's particularly, you know, impressive. It has a really open center. Usually when they're like this, I find the petals fall off pretty quickly. The color is all right. You know, nothing spectacular about it, but the other one, oh, that's definitely a winner. Do you remember back in spring, I grew lots of this Argeridum flower, the blue one for my bouquets. And I left a couple of plants in the ground here to save seeds. Well, in fact, the whole plant got a second flush of blooms. And I'm thinking next year what I'll do is I won't be as quick to pull the plants out after I've harvested from them, you know, a few times. I might just cut the plant back maybe by two thirds and then I will get hopefully another lovely flush like I have here with these couple of plants in autumn.
Some of the late planted dahlias are blooming. I lost the labels, but I believe these ones are the cactus dahlias. I just showed you peach and red, and then this is a really nice pink one, and then over here is a beautiful orange one. Now this whole bed itself doesn't look very nice because it's really overgrown with weeds, but that's all right. And then I have this one, which has gone a bit over. I believe this one is the art pop. And then the one over here, I'll put the name up on the screen. I can't remember off the top of my head, but you know, at least I got to experience a couple of those blooms just to see what they look like in the garden. And I quite like them. So next year, I think I might focus on growing more of these because they are a little bit more unusual, something a bit different to add into a bouquet. Well, that's it for this week, everyone. Thanks so much for sticking around until the end. And I am sorry that this video has been posted a little bit later than usual. I really did try and get it uploaded yesterday, but oh my goodness, it was just so busy. Anyway, that's life. I think I even said that last week too. It's just life at the moment seems super hectic. It's probably because the kids have started back at school. This is the first term back and you know, all the activities have started again and the appointments and I guess it's just getting back into that kind of routine after the summer holidays. Because here in Australia, we have the summer holidays for school during Christmas, around the Christmas period. It's the opposite to when I was a kid in Ireland. Anyway, oh, I'm just waffling on. Um, yeah, have a great week. I hope you get to spend a bit of time outdoors in your garden or, you know, just going on a nice walk somewhere. Um, yeah, and I'll see you again next Friday.